Well, one of the things that I would, I'm interested in seeing us do is, is working together as a community to uh, attract business. Uh, I don't think it's the mayor's job in particular to go out and uh, the only job that he has is to go out and find job people to come to work in Woodland or to find jobs for people who live in Woodland. But in conjunction with the Chamber of Commerce and the, uh, the Port of Woodland and, and a lot of the other groups in town uh, can work together to come up with a plan that would help to, to, to stimulate business, to figure out a way to make it happen in our community because there's no one person who has all the answers. So uh, I would work closely with those groups. Uh, impact fees are, are an interesting animal. I'm, uh, uh, you know, in some ways uh, they're a necessity because uh, the city, uh, the school district, a lot of other entities uh, count on those to help to pay for capital costs that come along when, they, uh, when something new comes to town because everybody else has been paying taxes for a number of years. And uh, so somebody new comes to town and they suddenly get to take advantage of all the work that everybody else has put in. So they, they do have a place, but you know they shouldn't be so onerous that uh, a business can't come to town and set up and, and do something that's there uh, that, that they want to do. I think they should be fair, reasonable, and they should be based on uh, you know, specific uh, facts that are, that are there that, that work with. And so I, and, and working with the, the chamber and some other people, that, that would be where we would uh, look at that, discuss that, and fees as a whole have, uh, need to be reviewed every now and again. Just because you have a fee structure doesn't mean that it has to stay uh, there all the time. Well, what we have to do is keep in mind that uh, government is here for a specific, uh, for specific, some basic core services that they provide, and that's streets, fire protection, law enforcement, uh, and then you start getting into the uh, into parks and some of the uh, you know, maybe a senior center, something of that nature, which are pr probably less. Uh, important in, a, in tough financial times, but at the same time the, the public wants to see us uh, do something in those areas. So, uh, you know, my, my goal is uh, if we have to start cutting our, our uh, police and the fire, which provide core services to everybody in the community, and try to put in another tax on the other side, I, I don't think that's such a good idea. I think that we have to fund our core services first and then look at the extra uh, items there that are going to happen uh, that, that need to go in. And, and uh, it's, um, it's a matter of priorities, and I realize that, that some people may say, well, gee whiz, this is something that's really fun and we'd like to, to see us do this, and, there, and it wouldn't impact uh, only a certain number of people. But when, when it comes down to the, to the nitty-gritty, we, we have to provide uh, the core service, and uh, that's what government is, is here to provide. Some of the other things could be provided uh, using uh, other privatized means or something of that nature, but that would be, uh, in our economic climate right now, that that's my, my thought process on taxes. Well, as as a uh, I, the city of Woodland is um, is outside Ctrans uh, service area, but our citizens do drive down here and uh, work and go to to work or and or go to business and and uh, go shopping and things of that nature. Uh, I'm always looking at things a little bit with a, a jaundiced eye when I when I see the um, bus only lanes. Um, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more study about that, whether that's actually going to make a difference to our, uh, uh, to the commute, to the, to the work that people are doing, before I'd be willing to say, yeah, that's a great idea, because uh, a lot of ideas that sound good on paper are not always in practicality um, going to work. 
And I think maybe a, either a study or a, a temporary pilot project or something of that nature might be something to look at uh, for that uh, project, but I'm not, I'm not um, real big on taking away uh, lanes that people need to travel in to get to work or do things um, uh, along those lines. Well, I think if they're doing, uh, if some of the things that they're doing right now are not cost effective, then we need to look at that a little bit closer. Uh, it's, uh, we're t it's talking about taxpayer money, and one of the big arguments that, that the taxpayers have is, is that you're not using my money uh, uh, efficiently or effectively, and, and I want to have something uh, for that. And if, if, we're, if we're running into the, uh, into the red on a, a project to burn cleaner fuel, um, it just that doesn't make a lot of sense to increase the sales tax in order to, to, to fund those kind of a thing. Uh, I just, you know, like I said before on the previous uh, question uh, about sales taxes and some other things, I don't think taxes are a good uh, option right at the moment unless we can really show a good strong cost benefit uh, to, the, uh, to the citizens because everybody's struggling and you raise sales taxes uh, for something that uh, maybe isn't as important and it, it, creates, it creates problems for folks. I think that uh, light rail can make a difference uh, for our communities as far as commuting and the ability for folks to get around who can't maybe afford to have their own car or to maintain it or, or do those things. And also it can, it can, you know, a lot of folks are, are working in areas that are quite a ways away and if they can get to a, uh, a rail station and, and take the, the uh, train, then it would save them uh, money, time, and uh, the number of cars we've got on the road. Of course, I, I draw back to my experience uh, having grown up in Chicago where we had, uh, we had uh, trains and buses and all that, and uh, a lot of people traveled that way to get to work, and uh, I, I did also for a period of time. And I, th I think that, that uh, it can be a, a solution to some of our problems uh, that we have with building more and more and more uh, highway and uh, and more cars and and uh, things of that uh, that type but uh, I think it also needs to be done with a lot of uh, study to make sure that it's the appropriate thing whether or not it was appropriate for the City Council and the CTRAN board to approve that um, you know we elect people to to stand in for us uh, to to do our work our, our community work that needs to be done and unless we're asking them to raise taxes for a, a large amount of money or something of that nature, uh, we have to count on them to make those decisions. They're sometimes tough decisions, and if at times they feel like they want to have an advisory vote, then, uh, then maybe that's a good idea, uh, a survey or something of that nature. But, um, you know, it's not everything can be voted on uh, just because somebody thought that they didn't have a say in that. And uh, usually uh, public agencies have an opportunity to go in and comment during uh, times that things like this are being discussed. And I know that that's been the, uh, our process uh, that we've dealt with in, uh, in Woodland for years. And I, I think that that's where people have their input into those things. We had uh, some of the same issues in Woodland because there was a, a large amount of growth. The city has, has doubled in size in the last uh, 20 years. And so we've seen a certain amount of building that's gone on. And so I, I understand 
uh, how that happens. The, the, you know, some of the old timers are pretty resistant. They, they want to keep everything the way it was, and it's, uh, that's difficult to do. People want to have a, a good place to live, and um, you know, the Camas area is a, is a, um, a nice place to live. I've, I've got family that lives out that way, and uh, so I can understand why people would want to live someplace that's, that's got a good quality of life and, uh, and things of that, uh, that type. Um, whether or not uh, we want to see that uh, expanded even more by building a bridge which uh, may increase the, the amount of flow that's going into that area may change the whole dynamics of that area. And, uh, you know, the growth is somewhat limited out that way because of the Columbia River Gorge uh, scenic area that, that prevents a certain amount of growth that happens there too and uh, trying to pack more people into a, to, to an area that's, that's bound by uh, a certain amount of hills is, is problematic and it needs to be studied carefully. I know that when we are dealing with uh, growth issues in woodland, uh, we want to think about those carefully before you just run out and say, well, just because it's growth is good. We want to be able to, to make that uh, common sense decisions about that and not be in a big hurry to do it either. Well, uh, right, uh, that's a, a perfect segue into a project that right now is being considered by the citizens in Woodland, and that is to build a, um, a public safety building, a new police station, which could later on be expanded to include the fire department. And uh, there's a proposition on the ballot to um, increase the sales tax by 1.1% uh, uh, to make that, uh, to raise it up to, uh, I think it makes it... Um, um, 0.77 or, or whatever the amount is that's there, but still lower than, than folks are paying in, uh, Van, in Vancouver. But um, I think that, that it's important that government do the best it can to, to fund normal operations and to put some money away for, for future projects uh, that, that may come along. But when it comes time for a big capital project, I think a lot of citizens want to have a say about that. And in this particular case, there's going to be a vote uh, of the public to determine whether or not they should raise the sales tax. And uh, much like we do in, uh, in our school district up there, when we, when we want to raise uh, money for a capital project, I think people want to be involved in making those decisions to see if it's a good decision and whether or not uh, you should increase my taxes. Uh, for this thing. Uh, if there was another method of, of uh, raising money that would allow us to, to um, maintain uh, services adequately and still put some money away each year, uh, that would be great. But I'm, I don't see that happening anytime soon, especially in our current economic climate. And I, but I think it's a, it's a good idea to be doing that. We should all have uh, reserves to deal with some of that although the state auditor says you shouldn't have too much reserve, but you should have some. And um, it's, it's, it's a difficult place to be, but um, I don't see uh, folks uh, thinking that everybody should have, the government should have a lot of money to, to do things. Everybody's struggling right now, and I don't think the city of Vancouver or the city of Woodland are any different when it comes times to, to look at how our taxes are being uh, use. Everybody's critical of government. Uh, they've got everything. Everybody wants to, to look them underneath a, uh, a microscope and try to make sure they're doing their right, the right job. And I think most places are trying to do that. There's not the waste that I see in some cities back east uh, where I've, I've heard and seen about those, those type of activities. But, I, but still, it's, um, it's not going to happen anytime, anytime soon. And I think for the time being, I, th I think voting uh, for capital projects is, um, is the way the public wants to see it done. And, and they're the ones that are, you know, we're working for them. We're not, uh, we're not running the show. And I think we need to keep that in mind. The things that, that's happening in Woodland uh, right now has to do with the um, uh, 
the folks on the city council uh, getting along and working together to uh, find a common uh, theme that they can work on. And uh, one of the things that I've been asked a lot about when I've been uh, door knocking on doors and passing out some of my literature is, are you going to do anything to, so that we don't have the constant infighting that's going on? And um, I say, yes, I plan to, to, uh, to work uh, with the city council to identify focused uh, objects that we can work on to, to develop um, a plan for, for action. And I think the city council is interested in doing that. Uh, I think that uh, we've had some difficulties with the current administration and uh, we, we want to move ahead and, and, um, and make that happen. And I can assure you that uh, I'm not going to be a grumpy old man when it comes time to, um, to, to run the uh, city council meeting. Second of all, we have a, a, a large traffic problem that's going on in Woodland. You know, you, you think about um, rush hour in, uh, in the big city. Well, we have a rush hour in the morning and a rush hour at night because our, our freeway overpass is so uh, constrictive. We can't get uh, enough cars moved through that for people who are trying to get out of town to go to work. And uh, this has been a problem that's been going on for, for 15 years or plus, and everybody's been trying to pay attention to it but no progress has been done. Nothing is different than it was uh, back in 1996 when I moved to Woodland. And uh, we need to get on that and, and, and push that through, work with the state to, uh, to fund a common, sense, um, a, a common sense solution to what the problem is there because uh, there's been money spent on a lot of other interchanges in the area we need to have our interchange uh, repaired and fixed and updated there and that's one of the things that I intend to push forward when I, um, uh, if I'm elected to mayor. I think it's, uh, people have identified that as one of their projects that they feel that needs to happen. We can't continue to wait. If we wait another 15 years, we'll have gridlock versus um, the uh, just a little bit of rush hour traffic at certain times during the day and I don't think that's good for business I don't think it's good for the citizens and uh, quite frankly I don't think people are going to want to pull off the freeway to buy things in Woodland even if they've got a place to stop there if they know they're going to be stuck in some um, endless uh, traffic backup so and then finally I, I bring a, a lot of experience and uh, and education to this to this job that uh, has not been there in years past. I have uh, 22 years of management and uh, administrative experience. I've, I hire people, I fire people, I uh, work in um, with budgets on a regular basis. I know how to do all the things that are necessary to, to be the mayor of a, of a city. I've got the experience to deal with that and the education also and so I think that I'd be a, an excellent uh, person for this job and that is one of the reasons I offered myself to the citizens to serve them for the next four years.